We're pleased to announce that this episode of the Talking Walls podcast is sponsored by Green King Sport, where football is more than a game. Green King Sport venues are showing every single one of Wolves' televised fixtures across the 23-24 season. And with over 900 sports pubs based in the UK, it doesn't matter where you are, you can watch every minute of the action. If you download the Green King Sports app, you can grab 10% off drinks whenever there's a football match on. But also, this month, there's thousands of points of free Guinness to be won and the chance to win one of six holidays as well. Yes, everybody, welcome back to the Talking Wolves podcast. We're here to react to last week's games against Manchester United and Chelsea. We'll look ahead to next weekend's match and I'll obviously answer your questions. My name is Dave and alongside me today, we've got Mr. Jordan Russell. George, how are you keeping, man? I'm all good, mate. How are you? All good, mate. All good. Busy weekend. Enjoy it. Yeah, not too bad. Obviously, the result was good on the weekend, wasn't it? I played mm. a bit of golf as well, so um, uh, it's been good to get out the last couple of weekends and play some golf whilst it's been a little bit drier. So, yeah, it's been all good, mate. Can't complain. Happy days. And our, your eyes do not adjust your screens, do not deceive <laughs> you. Mr Finn Morris has returned. Finn, how are you keeping? Back from the dead. Yeah, I'm all right. Thanks, mate. It's nice to be back. I missed you all. Yeah, I know. Miss you too. Someone, someone actually did leave a question saying should there be an investigation to where Finn Morris has gone, but he's here. So. It's literally like, it's probably the most comical set of events like every week where you wouldn't believe it. Like I've had people when we've been going on like the coaches to games and stuff like, what's going on? Why aren't you on there? Like there's some big conspiracy, but no, I'm I'm back now. It's lovely to be back. I say I've missed you. I've listened to you every week. It's just I haven't been there to contribute to the conversation, but <laughs> superb podcasting. So you, you haven't missed me at all. Yeah, I think you messaged us last week saying you you were home, but we were like half an hour into the pod. So just, yeah. just <laughs> so, uh, but now good to have you back. Unfortunately, Matt is poorly, so we hope he's here. Yeah, so it's just yeah, that was the deal. Place really, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um lads, we'll, we'll start off. I mean, with the Manchester United game. Obviously, <clears> we can wrap through this one quite quickly, although there was it was an extremely busy game. Um, Jordan, in terms of lineup, O'Neill stuck with a sort of similar lineup. I think it was uh, unchanged, was it from the um from the West Bromwich Albion game because Belgard started, Doc kept yeah. his place. Um, thoughts on that to start off with because I felt like Ain't Nori probably should have got a start. I, I half expected Tommy Doyle to keep his place. I know Jao Gomez was coming back for a suspension, but um, what were your thoughts on that one that he stuck with that team that won at, uh, at the Baggies? Um, I feel like he's a very fair bloke, Gary O'Neill. And I mean that from a, from a from a point of view and perspective of we didn't play very well in the derby. I think we've addressed that anyway. But a win's a win, and you know it was a big win for us as a club, really, uh, beating the neighbours. And I just felt like he was just being fair, and and I think yeah. it sends a bad message to change a winning side as well, especially in the magnitude of the game. It's not like we've gone and beat Chorley for hypothetically, and then you know you expect to make eleven changes back. I feel like. The, the the players that won at the Hawthorns deserved a chance again from the start because another one that didn't get back in was Sarabia, who's been excellent, um, mm. probably since Tottenham, to be fair, when he came off the bench and, and made his contribution. So yeah, I think all three were probably unlucky, and I feel like we know, you know, we know that Aitnery is first choice. That it's not make, you know, it's not an Aitnery versus Doherty yeah. from a, an ability level. I just think he's being fair to Doherty. If Doherty hadn't really let us down. He hadn't been spectacular. He did all right. I felt it'd have been asked to change it from the start, but yeah, hindsight's a wonderful thing, right? It wasn't exactly a great forty-five minutes. Yeah, I mean, I was going to go into that. I think it's hard to look at this one because it was so long ago, and then you see the sort of what actually happened at the weekend when he Ryan ate Nori for argument's sake did start. But I think Finn, in that in that first half against Manchester United, like George just said, frustrating because of how good Wolves have been at home as well, but. What possibly one of our worst 45 minutes of football you could say all, all season to be honest definitely yeah just on that point of of picking the same team as well I was thinking do you remember the big debate when Nuno started Ruddy in the FA Cup semi-final yeah. and it was yeah. like oh well he was a, a goalkeeper himself he wouldn't have wanted to be dropped through a second keeper and all that it, like O'Neill was like a a center uh, a fullback wasn't he like a proper like just try his best fullback do you reckon like was he is that right so, no, center mid. mid center was a center, center. was he center mid yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. really just gives me massive fullback energy i never actually really saw it <laughs> but it's still same thing i suppose with like tommy doyle and that if any if he's seen a, a central midfielder or like a doc put in a good shift 
I don't know whether like that's that same sort of Nuno vibe from that. But anyway, I um, got that completely wrong. That's so honestly, I'd have pictured a number three on his back. That's so anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, really, really poor, um, poor first half. And equally, I thought Man United. I think all season the narrative's been, oh, they play in moments. There's no patterns. I thought they looked really sharp. And it's sod's law, they turned it on against us. But also, yeah, very, very poor. I think there's so many narratives you can go with, whether it's the after the Lord Mayors and all that. But yeah, really poor. And an early goal really didn't help, I don't think, to um to, to settle things. Yeah, I think you could have put... Well, it was one of those when I saw Rashford was starting for Manchester United. He was either going to have a very good game or an atrocious game. Unfortunately yeah. for us, Jordan, he started the game off quite well. I mean, it was a... Frustrating that we allowed him so much space on, on the edge of the area, but it is a brilliant finish by Rashford, to be fair. Yeah, he's just guarded around Kilman, hasn't he? I feel like it's one of those there. Saar's got no chance. It was a good slick move. Like Finn said, Man United started the game quite quite positively. And um, it was a bit of a shock to me, really, because I, I thought they'd probably sit in a little bit. And especially with what we did to them at Old Trafford, I thought they might have been a bit more cautious, but they're properly just probably come with a counter punch and just thought you know what, let's just take the game to him for a little bit and, and shock him and and they did um and yeah like Rashford was lively wasn't he obviously had a bit of a point to prove I think he he pro, he pretty much well I think he was very lively for 30 minutes and then sort of petered out of the game um a little yeah. bit to be honest with you um so maybe wasn't he was a bit ill rather than being pissed in Belfast but um <laughs> No, look, good finish, good player. And um, it's the second time while well, he's done it to us, hasn't he? Had a bit of disciplinary come yeah. in with a bit of come in with a bit of a cloud over his head and you know, made an impact. Um, that's what good players do, right? To the talking on the pitch. Yeah, definitely. And the, the second one was frustrating as well, Finn, because it just sort of I stuff it obviously it was right in front of me in the South Bank and I sort of saw it went in and I was like, how is that well, how's that happened? How is that snuck in as well? I mean, I've watched it back. Um, it does come off Hoyland, so it's Hoyland's goal. But that's, I think that's a disappointing one to concede as well in, in terms of how easy it was for United to to get you know down to the byline and how it squeezed past the defender and uh, Joe Cesar as well. Yeah, and the, the warning sign was there with that because I think they had a little bit of joy a couple of minutes before down that side. Neto, I mean, it was great to have him back, but wasn't tracking back um, Luke Shaw, who's who's back and dangerous. I think that's, that's one of the points as well that Man United had their sort of starting back, four back for the first time, probably since first few games of the season, which when is when we also played as well. So we were unlucky there because Luke Shaw um, looked quite sharp as well. But yeah, was, I thought it was an own goal. In fact, I couldn't quite see from, yeah. from where we were, right, the other end. And then Hoyland sort of half celebrated underneath Dawson for a, for a second, didn't he? So I'd, I couldn't quite see what was going on. But yeah, it's a poor one. And I think it was, was it when we lost to Leicester 4-0? And there was a goal where I think they tried it two or three times down that same side. You know, like something's yeah. coming here, something's coming Hard in. It balls, really hurts man. when... Yeah, that's the one. And it felt a little bit like that. Like, we've had the warning sign, switch on to that, and and, it, and they got a goal from it. But, yeah, really, really poor first half. Yeah, I think, like I said, these things can happen in football, especially at Molyneux. We were never going to stay unbeaten at Molyneux forever, George. No. But I think the, the positive, I say the positive, you know, the fact that we've gone in at half-time and Wolves look like a completely different team in the second half is is a good sign, I suppose. And we started off quite uh, quite brightly, much better going forward, much better, you know, a little bit more solid defensively. Uh, first big moment there for Wolves towards the end of the second half was the penalty. Now, <laughs> for me, again, in the South Bank, I thought we were very, very lucky to get the penalty. I felt there was very little contact, uh, contact and Neto was a bit theatrical. What, what, what were your thoughts on that one, George? I said it on the space. I did after the game um, for the for the transfer window uh, stuff as well. Like, it's just never a penalty in a million years, is it? I think that <laughs> football football's a, football is a contact sport, right? And um, and there is con sometimes it doesn't mean because con it's contact doesn't necessarily mean it's a foul. And I just think yeah. that my issue with it a little bit is that there's a lot of Wolves fans going, oh, well, you know, we deserve that. We've had a bit of bad luck with VAR and all this sort of stuff. And yeah, you know what? We've had some shocking decisions on VAR. There's no two ways about it. But I just want to see VAR work correctly and get things right because no doubt we'll have one of those go against us, if not now, by the end of the season, where you just go, you know what? It's just never a penalty. Like we, we need to, when it benefits us, we need to almost be as loud as when it doesn't benefit us as mm -hmm. well. And for me, like the system's flawed. I mean, I'm happy we won a penalty for it. I'm happy we got a penalty for it. But you don't want to see, you don't want to, it's just not, it's just not a never a penalty. Is it? It's very similar to the Shaw one, I thought, in terms of 
minimal to no contact, made the most of it, made a real meal of it. And because there is contact by the law of VAR, they're going to just keep with the on-field decision. And like I say, happy we've got it from that perspective, but we need to be looking at VAR and we, we know it's flawed and it really needs either like scrapping altogether or just scrubbing and starting afresh from the start of the new season with like actual laws that people can get on board with because for me it's not a penalty and I I felt like Neto dived and I don't want to see us doing that like I I, I don't feel like I want to become that team I had enough of Pedence doing it over the last couple of years and like I don't want to I'd, Neto's such a good player and a talented player we don't need to be doing that sort of stuff for me. Yeah, I mean, you watch the replays, but there there is contact. But I think exactly what you said, really, not probably not enough for Neto to go down as he did. Uh, but ultimately, because there's contact, VAR can't really reverse the decision. And first time Jared Gillett had, had sort of pushed something in our way for a change, Finn and Sarabia obviously puts the ball into the back of net. Quite surprised to see him take it. Um, I was half expecting Armin Neto or, or, or Cunha to to have it because Cunha had the penalty against Brentford in the FA Cup as well. Mm. Um, and then, but there was a similar sort of situation. I, I can't quite remember if it was before Neto's uh, penalty shout or after when Onana uh, flattened, I think it was Kilman this time. Very, very similar incident to what we saw at Old Trafford at the start of the season. Um, but sort of that one obviously wasn't even looked at, I don't think. So I suppose, mm. you know, the, throughout the game, it balanced itself out a little bit in the end. I haven't seen that. Um... Kilman one apart from the screenshot. I haven't actually seen it in Paddy Pal made a joke about it, didn't they? Yeah. Did they? Well, yeah. I, I think it doesn't quite give the uh, the one at the start of the season enough credit that that was so blatantly obvious and the whole away end went mental. That one, I don't remember there being much of a fuss as in the stands. It, it might be different because I was in the North Bank and, yeah. and you in the South Bank might have seen it and, and people have gone mad. But I think the, the Sasha one was clearer. But yeah, on, on another day, it could have been given from the, yeah. the one screenshot that I've seen. Yeah, and, and it was quite a frustrating second half in, in, in regards to the fact, George, that obviously Wolves get themselves back in the game with that penalty and Manchester United all, all of a sudden sort of instantly respond. And it was Scott McTominay who come off the bench and actually looked really, really bright. You know, he's a very tall, physical player, but he was running rings around some of our players and unfortunately got that goal from the corner. And I just, I still frustrated with this because that just seemed too easy George I don't know how it was I mean your view of it ball comes in almost a free header and Saar just watches it fly into the top corner yeah I think um, I mean I was I watched it home on Thursday because I was um, I was working late and simply what happened was Kilman um, just didn't track him whatsoever and he hasn't even jumped for the ball McTominay so I've come over a few few heads and he's just sort of stood there ducked a little bit and it's just hit his head in ball's gone into the ground and it was just a weird goal to concede like I mean all night we didn't defend well and I feel like that was the first time and I think the back three have been excellent since we've been playing together that Man United game was the worst worst game they've had by far collectively um, and they were all culpable at some point during the game and I thought it was Kilman's fault for that one he simply just left McTominay to his own devices and again I, I think you look at Saar just because how slow the ball went in the back of the net yeah. and it just all mm. be a bit weird but one good marking to start off with and um, yeah I mean it literally just took the wind out of us because I thought if we'd have kept it 2-1 I think we'd have even gone on to win that game um, mm. and I know we didn't get it to 3-3 but at 2-1 I thought we would go on and win the game 100%. Yeah, I think Gary O'Neill made quite a few comments after the game and even pre and post Chelsea about the United game. And I think they were frustrated with a lot of what had happened, probably with all three goals or all four goals, uh, you could say, because I think they were all avoidable. A lot of them probably need to, if we switched on a little bit more defensively. But thankfully, Finn, we had a little bit of a comeback. Kilman grabbed the goal. It was Dawson and Kilman, two of the most unlikely uh, hmm. players to combine in, in the other box. Uh, to, to get a goal and then Neto's goal which almost was perfect Wolves if you had to describe Wolves this season and how they played it was a, a fantastic counter-attacking goal and the finish from Neto even I, uh, it, I, I and I don't feel it's an exaggeration I compared compare the finish to someone, someone like Mbappe the way yeah. he sort of you know hits it near post through the crowd but that was that was a brilliant uh, goal wasn't it Neto, and Neto didn't I mean he celebrated but it, he wasn't as wild as I expected uh, after scoring a 95th minute equaliser, to be fair. No, I think he, he gave a little heart to 
I guess his girlfriend or his family straight up there. And then, yeah, and then that was about it, wasn't it? Um, I think, yeah, as George was saying, I think at 3 1, it was a real momentum killer. So you've got to give him massive credit. I think at the time, sat in the stands, I said I'd almost rather it still be 2 0 than that sort of up and then the down. I think the crowd would have been like more hyped at 2 0 than, than that 3 1. It really took the wind out of sails. So, yeah, massive, massive credit. Kilman goal was a bit scrappy, wasn't it? But that Neto goal, as you say, you would define it as Wolves. You could also define it as Man United this season because I'd have been fuming if we'd have committed that many men forward on a corner in the 94th, 95th minute. Um, did really well. We had a big discussion um, with my mates that I went with about Onana's sort of, you know, the statuesque when yeah. that's acceptable on like a deflection and a real top bins, I think come on, like at least dive if, you, if I was a Man United fan. But it made the goal look a lot better. And as you say, it is that Mbappe where he, he opens up and then comes in and it's really, really effective. So it probably makes the goalkeeper look worse um, in that moment. But yeah, really, really impressed. And that was the high, wasn't it? The place was rocking <laughs> and uh, they'd given it, you've only come to see United. Uh, no, what is it? What's the one they do? You've seen United, seen United now, 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 now yeah, home, yeah. and then it with the North Bank going, you've seen the Wanderers now. And then, yeah. Um, and then this happened but if you're yeah. gonna concede a goal i think it's unbelievable that yeah the winner. yeah i was gonna say um the what you mentioned earlier about united as well i think you know uh ten Hag brought on i think it was at three one or even three two it started bringing on Maguire and johnny evans and so on hmm. but then for me if you're in the 95th minute of a game if you're winning three two you don't commit the men forward that they did oh, and I think on another day, like United fans would have been left very, very frustrated if they didn't walk away with the three points in that game. Mm. Um, unfortunately, George, for us, they did get three points. Like uh, Finn's just alluded to, it was Kobe Mayne's goal. Um, a lot of talk about him. I think it was a little bit of an exaggeration at full time because people talk about him being absolutely unbelievable, next best thing, should be in the England squad. I felt other than the goal, he had a quiet game. I'm not saying he's a bad player because I've seen him and he's a good player, but... Um, the main his goal for the winner was was very good. Again, I'm frustrated with the defensive side of things from from a Wolves perspective, but um, I think the finish is very very good. Yeah, the finish is unbelievable. I think he's a very very good young footballer, and I I have to disagree. I, I thought, and maybe it's just because of watching at home, uh, it maybe just like a different perspective. I guess like he, I thought he was the best player on the pitch. Oh, okay, truthfully, yeah. um, <laughs> I thought he was that good. Um, I thought he did the simple things well. No, just being honest, and I think um, his goal itself. I mean, it's just class, isn't it? And I think he put it. I think he put it through Kilman's legs again. Something that doesn't really happen a lot. Um, and then just shifted it and just bent it in the bottom corner. And I, I thought he took it extremely well. And it was a sucker punch. I feel like. We only lost that game on the first 45 minutes. I feel like we'd done more than enough to probably get something out of the game on our second half performance. If we'd have started the United game how we started the second half, even if we played like we did against Chelsea, we'd have put four, five, six past them. Like we really would have, because I think they're a very, very poor side. And especially before they played us, confidence was bereft, right? I feel like they've only they've only got to beat West Ham because they went and beat us on Thursday night and now they've probably got a bit of momentum, a bit of a role going on, um, which is a bit of a shame. But um, they were there for the taking, really. And I, I think what's really pleasing about this squad um, and, and sort of the feel-good factor around Wolves at the moment is we're actually disappointed with a home defeat to Man United. Like, there's been times where we've played the so-called big six sides and you just you're happy to take a point or get a scrappy wherever you can out there. Like genuinely was gutted that we we uh, did lose that game, and then obviously, you know, made going to Stamford Bridge that a little bit trickier. I think um, from a point of view of well, we couldn't lose the game. I think if we wanted any sort of European charge, mm. from our point of view. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate that about Manu. I mean, I did. He did. He didn't stand out to me at the ground, but I suppose obviously if you've got the uh, the footage at home on the TV and stuff, it's going to be going to be a lot more obvious for you, really. Uh, you know, it, might maybe... that, it might have been that Anne Fletch in my, in my ear, though, as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you not think he and glides I'm... like there's a certain category of player, though, that just glides like that and you go, Oh, he looks class. Player, like, yeah, it's yeah. Player, he, yeah. He, you just watch it a few touches, you can go, Oh, player, yes, really, really good. And he yeah. doesn't, he's, he's got that in a positive way, that Martial about him, like even when he scored, his, his face was just a bit like, mm, like Martial's facial expression. Finn, you'll change. appreciate this. Do you know who his brother is? Kobe Vane. No. No. Um, you know, Jordan, what's his name? Off Love Island. Jordan, Hay uh, is it Haynes or not? 
the Jordan Hames off Love Island. I uh, remember that... on the the F Foot Asylum series, and that woman goes, "Who's Jordan again?" Right. Oh yeah, 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 and he was the one in his series. He was he with Amber, and then at, at the end, he made a switch at the very end. Sorry, people won't. Anyway, uh, yeah, Jordan. I don't think people have tuned in for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that's his brother. Anna, he was with a girl called Anna, Anna the one that was with oh, no, Ovi. Yeah, 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 that was it. Yeah, and she was really annoying. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah and, then, and then she tried to he tried to bin her off last. Well, that's his brother. Yeah, off. that's his no. brother. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we'll move. Half, good... half brother. Half I'd assume it's his half brother. Yeah. 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 Moves us lovely onto uh, nicely onto the Chelsea game, I suppose. Um, <laughs> Chelsea versus Wolves. Um, George, we went into this game. I think that on last week's pod, we said. I mean, I wanted to try to get four points and obviously that wasn't going to be the case after losing to United. But I think we pinpointed this one as probably the tougher game out of the two. Mm -hmm. I think Chelsea did give us our scares at times, um, but a really, really top performance. I mean, I'll ask you about the lineup again because Gary O'Neill did change it this time. It's exactly as I predicted on the, on the preview, to be fair, because Pablo Sarabri are coming for Belgard. We saw uh, Ryan Aitnori start uh, for his 100th Premier League appearance, by the way. And... Uh, Big Zhao Gomez coming back in, and I think, I mean, you look at that team, and Gary O'Neill got it absolutely bang on the on Sunday. Well, I think that is our best eleven, right? I feel like there's obviously the argument when Juan comes back from um, the Asia Games that he would slot back in. Um, I think we've we're blessed at the moment with some very good attacking options. Um, I, I don't necessarily feel like Juan comes straight back in when he comes in. That's probably another conversation when he comes back from the Asia Cup. Um, yeah. I, I always said on the pod previously that I thought we'd get three points. I said we'd beat United and lose to Chelsea because I thought Chelsea had turned a corner. But they do this to you, this Chelsea team. Like You feel like they turned a corner. And then, obviously, post us recording that pod, gone and got slapped at Anfield. And yeah. then, obviously, we slapped them as well. Um, but it's still a very good result on paper because there's not many teams that will go to Stamford Bridge and still win there. I, I remember Brentford doing it distinctively earlier on in the season. Um, maybe even Forest might have got a win there yeah, this Forrest season did. as well. Um, but then, like, I know they've got positive results against Arsenal, Liverpool. Been unbeaten in ten there. And I, I told yeah. a Chelsea fan that uh, on the weekend. They were like, "No, we, no, we're not." So genuinely, you have not lost in ten games at Stamford Bridge. So I think yeah. they they're a little bit similar to us, where they've been good at home but really poor away. But then, you know, the, other than their cup games, um, you know, since Christmas they've been doing okay. Um, but. Yeah. And then, but obviously that Liverpool game, which I think they were very, very disappointed about. But I think it it was interesting this game because I think um, although how, as bad as they have been, I suppose the same in Manchester United, they still got very, very good footballers. And I think Cole Palmer's one of those, and he grabbed the opening goal. I think this is just a very, very good goal in general. I think Enzo's ball into Cole Palmer was was you know brilliant, and it's a good finish. I'd be a little, I was a little bit frustrated with Totti just standing a little bit higher than everybody else. Um, I think if he just steps back a couple of yards in level with the back five, that goal doesn't happen. But I mean, I can't take much away from the pass and, and the finish, to be fair. And Cole Palmer, he's a man in form, doing bits of my air uh, fantasy Premier League, to be fair to him. But um, that was a good way, I mean, good way for Chelsea to take lead, frustrating way for us, obviously, to go behind. Yeah, I mean, I'm the same. I benefited at least with the the five points for the goal. Um, but they're, they're normally penalties, aren't they? To be fair, but um, but no, yeah, it's, it's the one thing. But obviously, I'd rather not have scored. But yeah, great goal. Um, I don't know. Jack and Gallagher meant that thing in the build up, but it was almost like one of those. To bring it back to FIFA, it is like a bit like a FIFA scum. But I think he did it accidentally, and it worked really well. And as you say, yeah, Kaiser's ball was, was superb. So frustrating one. Um, but if you're going to reply. Um, reply that quickly and it just killed like we were talking about momentum in the previous game completely killed that for us to to suck a punch straight back yeah I mean it was a slice of luck I mean a slice of luck for the first two goals but I think you know we talk about the Neto penalty against United but then you pick out all the bad luck that we've had the first half of the season hmm. it looks like hopefully things are turning slowly towards our favour or at least balancing themselves out Jordan and thankfully it wasn't a dodgy VAR decision we did make our own luck and the first goal uh, being Cunha, completely wrong foot, uh, Petkovic in goal. Um, great way to respond. But then Ryan Aitnori, almost an identical sort of hmm. massive deflection to take it past the goalkeeper as well. But, I mean, with the amount of bad luck that we've had, uh, George, I mean, we do deserve to a couple of shit shithousery goals like that, don't we? Hmm. Yeah, of course you do. And I feel like you make your own luck. And teams of, like Wolves teams of old in the last couple of years in the Premier League, 
what's really good to see is the amount of bodies that we're committing in the opposition box. That's been the big problem. And that's why we're scoring more goals. Now we're committing more players to, to break lines and get in the box and the penalty area. And even like people like Lamine is getting more involved when it comes to the opposition uh, box. Nice to see pop in there. Um, and I, th- I think he scuffed it really with his right foot. Hmm. We've got a lucky deflection. But it's just good to see that we're committing bodies and we're exciting to watch, I think. Like, I... I I was all I was against going back to a back five because I feel like we've seen it and I know Finn was a big advocate of it, but it is the best. It's how we play our best football, and mm-hmm. we've got a lot of pace. We hurt teams on the attack, but it's the intent that we play with that back five. Like we've been uh, previous versions of this team under Large and even Lopetegui to some extent, we'd sit in, be a bit well, we'd be very pragmatic. We'd go take a lead and we'd try and hold on to it, and it worked to be fair um, at times. I just like the commitment of seeing us playing f- full flow and attacking football, counter attacking football, and when we when we go, everything we do is with intent. It's not just yeah. half arsing it. We actually, you know, we're gonna when we press, we all go. When we break, the full backs and the wing backs fly. Like it's it's just really really good to see. And I think O'Neill for everything that you can give him credit for so far. I think that's the biggest thing for me is like. We, we could quite easily sit in against a lot of these teams and just sort of just take our medicine and just try and nick a result. Like, we go toe-to-toe, and I, and I love it. I really do like it. Yeah, and I think, I mean, the first goal, um, which obviously Cunha scored via a deflection, a lot of good work from João Gomez. He, he won that ball back brilliantly in the midfield. I saw earlier on, so I'd say Caicedo and Enzo cost Chelsea 222 million, whereas Lamina and João Gomez cost Wolves 24 million. And that's the, the difference in quality. And I think you're exactly right, George. The way, you know, why why should Aitnori, Nori, who's a left wing back, be on the near post when we're attacking down the right hand side? Like, you know, yeah. but that that's the that's how we had a lot of success under Nuno with Doc and even Johnny at times, you know, getting into those positions for him. Um and obviously, in an ideal world, you'd love to see Wolves play a 4 2 3 1 because then you could fit the likes of Cunha and number nine, Huang and Neto, and, and then even add Saravia or Belgard all into the same team. But for whatever reason at the moment, and it's sort of been the case for the last six or seven years, the back five is just how things work for, for Wolverhampton Wanderers. <laughs> It is like that sort of toxic X, isn't it? Where you're like, no, don't don't go back, don't go back, and then, yeah, and then we go back for a little bit, and then I'm sure we'll try, maybe next season we'll go right. We need to progress, go into a back four, concede a shitload of goals, and then yeah, we'll go back. I think it felt like that in the the first half of the Man United game, going back the year when you had Belgard, uh, Cunha, Neto, almost like they like the three behind a one that you almost wanted Fraser up there, and then have that three like you say you would do in a back four. Um, but yeah, I just I don't think we'll ever get away from a back five, and I think. To sum up, like you said there, I think Wolves at the moment, I think that's why the fans are getting so behind it. We're not we're not the best team in the world. We are limited. Like you say, we, we, we pretty much have to play in a back five. We are limited, but I think I'd sum us up by saying we're a pain in the arse. And I think if you look in every area, if you're a midfielder, if you're Caicedo and Enzo, you go, oh, Lamina and Jao Goma, I don't fancy that. They're going to be at me. If you're Cole Palmer, you're going, I don't fancy tracking eight Nori back. If you're a, a full-back, a centre-back, oh, Cunha and Neta, like, you, I don't think you fancy winning any battle there against Wolves players and we as you say we have been limited you I think we're on a bit of a high at the moment but then you think back to losing to Sheffield United and maybe the Luton performance and maybe we show our best against these teams and as we always say with Wolves underdogs backs against the wall that that's when we're best but I just yeah I really really like the team I really really like that shape as I was saying from from the very start of the season um and yeah and I don't even know what goal we're up to but that, that that's how to sum it up. <laughs> no, that was well that was the first two goals I mean Jordan and the second half side off quite well as well as well. And I think this was quite an important goal to get because I think if you sit on a two one lead for such a long time, especially away from home, Chelsea can have a set piece or a dodgy decision go their way and they get back into the game. But again, this is such a brilliant goal. I mean, Neto down the right hand side. Um, unbelievable player Neto and he was fantastic against Manchester United for the goal in the second half I think a lot of people were frustrated by his lack of work rate and defensive work rate against Manchester United but mm. I thought he was fantastic against uh, Chelsea unfortunately obviously not to be given the assist for the 8 Nori slash own goal but this assist was brilliant down that right hand side George and he barely if you watch it again he barely looks up to see where anyone is he just almost knows Cunha's there and it's a great little ball into him and a, a fantastic finish as well isn't it yeah, I mean he's on fire again, isn't he? And I feel like I'm so glad we took the we took the chance to really sort of 
easing back into football, right? Because I feel like hamstring tears, especially for um, a player that's based on power and explosion, you need to be careful with them. I feel like it's just showing the weekend what's happened with Eze and Elise that they're both back out, like the rushed them back Palace for Sheffield United, and they're both back out yeah. and injured for some time. So I'm so glad that we've let him get up and do his rehab and get up to speed as he needed to before we've unleashed him. Um, yeah, it's, un- it's an unbelievable. He's just a ve- he's just an unbelievable player, and he? he's he's so so good. And when he's on fire like that, that it's uh, I would I wouldn't swap him for many people. I don't think I don't think you mm. could give me someone and go him for him when I go. Yeah, like I think when he's on when he's on fire, he's unplayable. Um, the one I feel sorry for in all this is Thiago Silva because like <laughs> there's going to be people now that are like starting to watch Thiago Silva since he's been playing at Chelsea, like younger fans. And I don't mean this to be like disrespectful, but Thiago Silva was unbelievable defender. Like, and now he's playing in that fucking poverty team. Like his legs are <laughs> as well. Like he's just honestly, he just should he should have given up last season. I think. Um, but he's still trying, bless him. Um, he's not being helped by his teammates. Um, but yeah, but taking all that aside, I still don't think he'd have gotten close to Neto at Pomp, yeah. the way he was playing on Sunday. Yeah, I think a, a brilliant, brilliant goal. And then to to wrap it up, Finn, a hat-trick. I, I think it's the first, well, the only other Premier League hat-trick I can think of um, since we've been back up is Jota against Leicester. Obviously, Jota got... A couple in the Europa League as well. Um, I think it was that same season or the season after. Um, but hat trick for Cunha, great run down the left hand side. Gusto, who was on a booking, by the way, very, very lucky not to have got sent off, I think, there. Um, but then if you're a player on two goals, Finn, you're taking that that ball and putting it on the spot, aren't you? And uh brilliant penalty to send Petkovic the wrong way and uh doing the old arsh of in. With the, with the three fingers in. Well, I think Ashford did four as well. Just with one less, four. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just lost a finger. Um, yeah, I, I think it's been, yeah, it's been Cunha, then Sarabia, and then Cunha again for penalties, hasn't it? Um, but um, yeah, I think you've, you've always got to take, it's like football manager, isn't it? Automatically, if they're on two, <laughs> yeah. they, they take the uh, they take the penalty for the third. And uh, yeah, I think if we're talking about that penalty in the Man United game as sort of like a, a new generation penalty. That was an old school pen. Like, no doubt about it. Just wipe him out. The body, like, guilty body language. And again, I, people were calling for a Casemiro second yellow, weren't they? I think this one was way more worthy of one. Um, and he was very lucky. I think he's been sent off a few times. And then he also escaped yeah, a, another red recently, Gusto, as well. Um, uh, but I don't think, yeah, at 4-1 up, I don't think anyone was really, really screaming for that red card. Um, but yeah, good pen again. I don't know what his, re- his record wasn't great before Wolves, was it? But it's hundred percent. I saw on the, I was on the stream that I was watching. It came up. I think he'd, he'd missed two of his last five. Um, yeah, he had. Yeah. So, but but touch wood. Good, good pen. Good technique to send in the wrong way. Jordan, uh, I mean, we'll quickly talk about your friend Thiago Silva. He's, he, he knocked in a <laughs> consolation goal. Um, <laughs> I think it was far too easy for him to win this header originally. I think Gary O'Neill will be disappointed with this goal to concede. Far too easy to win the header. I think Sark possibly, if I'm being harsh, could possibly do a little bit better. But then Kilman as well probably should hook it away. I think Kilman's trying to go with his head. I think if he sticks his mm. foot out, he'd probably get something on it. Probably, yeah. I think it's one of those goals where they're like it's just garbage goals, aren't they? Where yeah. it wasn't gonna like they were well beaten. I think Stanford Bridge was half empty at that point as well. Um, and it's just one of those, yeah, like they're obviously disappointed to concede. You do see it happen a lot of times, I don't you do see oh, yeah. these goals happen a lot, and it's just like, yeah, I mean, looking back at the tape on it, you'd go, oh, shit, that is. Um, mm. but you don't want to let that sort of taint anything that sort of happened. Oh, I feel like not. had it been a, had it been a 2 1 2 1 game, uh, or even 3 1 at that point, I feel there might have been a bit more urgency which is you know it's probably bad for me to say these being professional footballers but it, you can slack off a little bit when the game's done and dusted it's just natural mm. um a little get a little bit comfortable and yeah i mean they went to four two and there could have been a merv- nervy minute or two but again i think we just saw the game out really really well and, and to be honest with you chelsea were well beaten at that point as well i don't think they had it in them to even mount any sort of comeback to be fair but they this gave is- them a chance with was it because at that point was that 85th minute and they added 10 on yeah, so yeah. It would have had 15 minutes, so you'd have been, if anything had have happened and developed into a, God forbid, four all, you'd have been fuming with conceding that goal. Yeah, I, th- yeah. I think that the one thing that I've mentioned now a couple of times, I think it was predominantly, it came to my mind at Everton at home uh, just after Christmas, and then I think it's the same for this game as well, where the amount of, I would say Nuno 
large and Lopetegui would have all gone into that game at half time and said, right, let's 11 men behind the ball, let's just sit on this one goal lead away at Stamford Bridge. And the same at Everton, even, I mean, uh, at home against Everton, we were one or two goals up at half time. And I think a lot of managers would say the same thing. But we've gone out there and we know we could play better football than Chelsea. We know we could get out of Chelsea and we've gone and, gone and scored another couple of goals to go 4 1 up. You know, I think that is, it's almost, that's the breath of fresh air that I'm getting with Gary O'Neill at the moment. And you look at goal scoring stats of our front players at the moment. Last season, Cunha for Wolves, 17 games, two goals, zero assists. So far, 23 ga games, nine goals, six assists for Cunha. Huang, last season, 27 games, three goals, one assist. So far this season, 20 uh, games, 10 goals, three assists. Pedro Neto, last season, 18 games, zero goals, zero assists. This season, 14 games, two goals, eight assists. And then Pablo Sarabia, last season, 13 appearances, one goal. This season so far, 16 appearances, two goals, five assists. So the amount, you know, the numbers that these guys are getting now is fantastic. And that, that has been the issue for Wolves, hasn't it? Like in terms of goal scoring, noon, ever since Nuno's last season, but Bruno Large couldn't figure it out. Lopetegui seemed to get better, but there was some times where, you know, we really, really struggled. Um, mm. But then Mikey Burrows put a stat out yesterday. Since COVID, the COVID restart, Wolves had only scored more than two goals in six Premier League games out of 142 games. Since Brentford, Wolves have done it four times in the last five games. Scored more than two goals in four four times in the last five games. So, George, it's just full. Of, we're just full of confidence at the moment, and. I mean, if I um, this I was going to mention this later on um, when we move on to the Brentford game. If you look at the, our home games now between now and the end of the season, because I think home games ultimately that's where we're going to get the majority of our points. Our home games now we've got Brentford, Sheffield United, Fulham, Bournemouth, West Ham, Arsenal, Luton, and Palace. Bar Arsenal, and I look, no Premier League game is easy, but bar Arsenal, you should be, Wall Street fans should be confident going into every other one of those games to get wins, shouldn't you, really? We should, and I think we will be the favourites with the bookies, let's be honest, with all those home games other than Arsenal as well. So we've got to see it as a massive opportunity. These are still the games where, the, the sort of games where I don't fancy this as much because I feel like teams will give us less space and mm, historically sure. we've been a bit more difficult for us to break teams down. However, the way we're playing at the moment and the confidence we've got going forward, um, we've got to back ourselves to to go and score goals against these sort of teams. Um, I think we'll be. I think we'll have a really strong end of the season. Like I, I know people do think Europe. I still think we're a little bit short of that personally, especially at this stage. I feel like we've got to put a, a serious run together to get seventh, possibly, mm. well, possibly eighth. Get Conference League. It depends on the coefficient, isn't it? Mm. Um, Eighth might be doable. I don't. I think seventh will be a tall order. Being personally honest, but if we can put a, um, a run together of home results, which you know we're very very strong at home, um, let's just see where it takes us. I mean, I mean, this season so far has been far super, far superseded any expectations I had for the season. Um, and again, a lot of a lot of credit for that has to go down to Gary O'Neill, um, the coaching staff, and and also the playing squad as well. Like I feel like. There's um there's a real good feeling about this team at the moment, and I feel momentum's there, and we've got a bit of quality. Um, so yeah, let's see what happens. Finn, do you think you'll need to start renewing your passport soon? I think, well, I'm just looking at those games now, and when you say, "Oh, looking at our home form," I think we're most likely to to beat Arsenal and probably draw with the rest. I'm just looking at the teams. <laughs> I mean, Brentford, we've done all right, but you look at the teams: Sheffield United, we lost; Fulham, we lost. Bournemouth, we got the late winner to be fair. West Ham, we lost. Uh, Luton draw, wasn't it? Palace lost as well. I know it'll be. You get it, it changes being at but home. That's why, why I've said the last couple of weeks. So if you can m m better your results for the first half of the season, and I know it, it'll yeah. balance itself out because the chances of you beating City again and possibly Spurs, both of them are away, yeah. is unlikely. But then if you can beat your Palaces, you can beat your Lutons. You know that that will swing it all around. So Wolves, exactly. especially with those being at home. And they're late on in the season, looting a palace. Like, but one of those two teams, mm. well, might have something to fight for still. They might be done. So, you know, I think it'd be interesting. I just want to see a Finn Morris vlog back in uh, back in Europe. Mate. That's what I want. <laughs> it's interesting how many, yeah, that I've had a lot recently. Now we've got good. Like, oh, where, it's like funny. everyone's forgotten. Now they're going, oh, yeah, where, where are those videos, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> where were you when we were losing 3 0 every week? <laughs> putting them out. Um, yeah, yeah, we've, got, no. we've got a big chance there with those home games.
Yeah, I know. We'll move on to uh, the Brentford game now as well. Um, a team that, you know, over the last few weeks, we played them three times. Pretty much got the better of Brentford, um, George. But Ivan Tony is back now, so it's going to be a different sort of challenge. Any lineup changes, do you think, for this game? Or you, or do you, if everyone's fit, you just stick with the same team? Best 11. I think the best 11 was that who we played against Chelsea. You just go again and 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 go with it. Like I say, we've had a good recent record against Brentford. There'll be a lot of confidence with the team. I feel that, you know, we beat them obviously twice legitimately with 11 men on the pitch. And then hmm. we drew the game. We had 10 men for like 80 odd minutes. And they, I'll be in the back of their minds as well, right? They'll feel like Wolves might have our number at the moment. And we probably have, right? I feel like Tony's naturally a massive plus for them you know he's a very very good player we know that he's he's the talisman he'll he'll do a lot you know he'll make a big difference for them um i'm not sure if even Bremo's back was, did he get injured yeah he didn't go to Africa, did he? he didn't go i don't know if he's back mm. um i know Wissa's playing for congo they're still in the the african cup of nations and i, I actually like Johan know i think he's a very underrated player so mm. they've got well, they're going to have Tony and Morpé, and just oh, Morpé is, I'm not going to say what I think of him because he'll probably score. Um, he's scored in the last two, has he not? I think he's yeah, he has, yeah. scored in every game. Yeah, he's a little shit. I don't mean, he's one of those you've been playing for you because you understand, you get it, but yeah, he's a little bit of a he shit. He got house. us promoted. Um, I'll always, oh, well, we would have got promoted anyway, but he scored the goal, didn't he? Fine, <laughs> he did, yeah. Um, <laughs> Bre- Bre- Brentford historically have been. A very, it's been a very tricky game for us, home and away. Mm. And I, I remember when they beat us at Molyneux a couple of years ago because it was on my birthday. And my first year back in lunch, yeah. for it was lunchtime kickoff, wasn't it? And they just, they well, they just deserved it. Um, and the, the Thomas Frank antics started. Um, you've got to score first. I always feel Brentford. You've got to score first against them. Like, yeah, I feel like if they if they if they take a lead or whatever, they're very difficult to to get back. You know get back in front of um I feel like if we start quickly and get an early goal it plays in our favour but they will come for a point they will come and try and do every certain dark art tactic they normally do and it's just about the fans not buying into that and just keeping on top of uh supporting the team and stuff because Brentford will try every trick in the book no doubt about it yeah it was their, their first couple of weeks in the Premier League wasn't it and Mm. Tried everything. David Roy's glove was ripped halfway through the second half somehow. Uh, I think it was uh, Christopher Ayer had gone down. Um, Pontus Janssen kept going down as well. So, yeah, I mean, that was a frustrating game. But since then, I don't think we've lost to them, uh, both home and away. Finn, we've had some, you know, we've had some tight games with them. Um, but Ivan Tony's going to be a big one there, Talisman. And they've done OK since his return. I think that, you know, they beat Forrest. Uh, I've just had their fit, their uh, results up here. They're beating Forest. Yeah, uh, they just kicked off against Manchester City, and they we're unlucky against Spurs as well. They got that back to to three two last week as well. Um, so, going to be a tough game, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just thinking now. Did you say the famous line when they'd come up, or they'd already had a year in? Oh yeah, Brown. Because I'm thinking since you said it, before. have they beaten us? Or was it? No, maybe it was the first year. Maybe. It would That's be nice if first, since yeah. you since you said the thing. They'd never beaten us, but um, no, yeah, I, I'm surprised sure. by that. I always fear going into a game against Brentford, and yet that's we're somewhat of their bogey team. If it is that over what three seasons that had been out, like with the FA Cup game, uh, is it Carabao? No, FA Cup games, they're like what six, seven, eight unbeaten. Um, but yeah, the Tony thing does add a big element back, unlocking Neil Morpe, as we discussed. <laughs> um, but they, I, no, Vissa, no, um, and Buemo is big as well. I don't. I mean, Wang's teased us a few times, hasn't he, with with coming back early and uh, and then they've got those late goals. So we're, we're both without players, but I think that eleven that started against Chelsea should should be enough. Touchwood. Yeah, I mean, very quickly touching on Wang, they play Tuesday in the semi final of the Asia Cup against Jordan. Um, not Jordan Russell, the, the country Jordan. Um, <laughs> knock him out. We yeah, need to yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, really, I mean, they've been. South Korea have been very, very poor throughout the tournament. And like there are a lot of people who can't believe that they, you know, uh, how they made the, their way through this tournament. I think Jurgen Klinsmann's their manager at the moment. Yeah, Klinsmann. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they've been very, very dis- I've just seen an article uh, saying it's zombie football. Like um, so I mean they if they win, I don't if, if they do get knocked out, I'm not sure 
he might be in the squad Saturday, but it might be a bit tight to be honest. Um, mm. If not the the um, the final is next Saturday, as in the tenth when we play Brentford. So the Son and the Huang return will definitely be Spurs away, uh, which I'm sure will get lot, mm. there'll be lots of eyes on that game. Um, anyway, uh, especially if they win, that would be get some good attention. Huang versus Son again. Um, We'll move on to the questions, lads. Funnily enough, the first one is about Huang Yi Chan. George, Tom um, on Twitter says, does Huang come straight back into the 11? Well, he's actually asked two questions. That's his first one. Does Huang come straight back into the 11? Uh, I mean, I said earlier on this pod, for me, not straight away because I feel like yeah. it sets a, sends the wrong message and I feel Sarabia has been excellent. Um since he's been given a run of games, I've started to feel I've started to feel like we've seen his quality now as a footballer. There's a lot of people that rip him off um, because he hasn't got that explosive pace of Neto and, and the power of Wang and stuff. But he's such a good footballer that I'm glad that people are actually seeing that now. Um, mm. I feel like we're just in a good position now where we've got Wang, Neto, Cunha, Sarabia, Belgard, um, to some extent as well, who you can sort of swap in and out of those positions and you won't really see too much of a drop off um i feel like we know belgard probably can't play through the middle now from what we've seen mm. but he's still he's still a very good player um, and can still offer us a lot moving forward um but yeah for me huang doesn't come straight in i don't think it'd be long until he was back in but i don't think he comes straight in yeah finn do you think the same i think so but in the end our, our, our strongest front three you would probably say Cunha on the left, Huang up front, Neto on the right. So we'll get there eventually, but I know what you mean, until Sarabia gives a reason. Like, Doc wasn't great against United, hence Ignori comes back in. I think it'll be something like that. One or two Sarabia stinkers in a row and it'll be it'll be back in. But I, I like all those players. I don't I don't want him to be dropped. It's almost like you would then almost want to go to a back four if we could and just put Huang in front of those three. <laughs> maybe that's the, the end goal maybe next season. But yeah, I, I, I agree. No, I, agree. There, I think. Yeah, the second half of uh, Tom's question as well. If realistically they were to leave in the summer, what should we be de- be demanding for Neto and Cunha, Jord? See, I think, think Neto's. Yeah, on, I think Neto's got. I was going to say, I think Neto is going. I think mm. Cunha stays for another year. Um, I saw something very interesting, and it's very true as well. Like. You look at people like Mudrick, yeah, Anthony, who've well. gone for like 80 odd million quid, and you just think, well, Neto's 100 plus, isn't he? 120 plus. The thing, the problem is, Wolves is, I, I don't ever feel like we've we've sold big on players. Mm. I feel yeah. like the Neves deal, we got a lot more than we should have for him in the summer, purely on a contract basis of how long he had left and Saudi coming in. I think that with Mendes being involved, he might be one of those where we have to pull him a bit of a favour. And I reckon I'd, I'd be shocked if we got more than 60 for him. Um, although I feel like we should be getting a lot more than that. Probably north of 90, being perfectly honest. I feel like we'll get somewhere around 60 million quid for him. So you're saying like 60, but you get two sporting Lisbon kids on loan or like just because we need I to ju- repay him? I just think, yeah, more so like we've had a lot of good deals with Mendes previously like mm. it's almost like you scratch my back you i scratch your back you scratch mine and we've got the right side of that when we've got Josh in the championship and we got Moutinho never you know we've yeah. got the list goes on like i always feel like with mendez whatever the transfer fee is it's not real money it's all monopoly money yeah. the <laughs> only thing i will fair. say about ne- what i will say about mendez is that we're not his favorite toy at the minute he seems to be like fleecing Notts forest at the moment which yeah. is pretty good <laughs> and i'm pretty and i'm pretty sure that Notts forest will not be signing pedro neto so who knows if he's if he's still like messing around with forest might actually get to keep neto for another 12 months do you think <laughs> distracts him do you think <laughs> over there could, do you think he could go to psg as an mbappe replacement cuz i'm yes. thinking like in terms of neto because i'm thinking obviously mbappe is big talk of him going to um, Real Madrid. I don't know many other world class wingers that could fill that sort of void. And look, Neto's number wise probably isn't ever going to replace what Mbappe's brought to PSG over the last few years. But I think he would certainly be a quality. And obviously, they've got big George Mendes links as well with uh, their sporting director. Yeah, I can see out. PSG. It's just one of those things, isn't it, with Neto? It's about 
legacy, I guess, and does going into um, PSG and win, winning Liga and is that is that is that what you you know? It obviously looks good on the CV, but does it actually? Is it just stat padding a little bit because it's a it is really a one 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 team league, isn't it? Um, I feel like he could go and play for anyone around the world, personally. But I think I feel like he could go to Madrid. I, I could see him around Barcelona. Madrid. I think he could go to Barcelona if they had to pop the piss in. Like, there's all these teams. You, think, you know what? He could go there. I still think there's a. I still think I could see him playing for City. I could. I could see. Him, I was so, having a discussion the other day. He starts for every Premier League team, doesn't he? I think. I could see even him. even if. Or if Liverpool got rid of Salah, you know what I mean? If Salah goes to Saudi in the summer, like nah, even if they Liverpool. get him, no, but no, but no, but I mean, like in terms of like if Salah moves on, Liverpool are probably going to need another one up there, aren't they? Yeah. Well, every team, I think you'd say, I, I think Spurs. I think he'd have a lot of fun on the right for Spurs. I think, like you say, it'll be Salah replacement there. You say City, he'd be oh, that'd just be incredible well, for him incredible I'm, I'm thinking about this from like a jota perspective where i'm still like happy to see jota score i think i'd be like oh good for netta like I'd, I'd hate it internally but i think that'd be a nice move for him maybe spurs i don't think they'll have the money but i think any team he slots into arsenal they'll realize that stack is actually a left back he'd, he'd go in on the right <laughs> i think every every team there he slots in i think the good the good thing in a way as well now and I think the thing that happened with Nunes is almost going to be a blessing in disguise because if anyone, mm. there's ways to go about leaving a football club and I'm sure by the club are already going to have a pretty good idea of what Pedro Neto wants to do um, mm. and it's up to the club and Neto or whoever to get the best deal for both parties. Um, so as long as he doesn't kick up a fuss like Nunes and skip training and stuff because you know what's going to happen. I think, like like mm. you said, the thing with Jota, people still respect Neto if he moves and leaves and moves on in the proper way. You know, everyone still loves Neves. I know he's gone to Saudi Arabia or whatever, but if he came back to wherever and for whatever reason, I think people would still respect him. Um, but yeah, interesting one with uh, Neto. George, I fully agree in regards. I saw a similar post this morning about the Mudricks and Antonys and so on. Um, I, yeah. I don't think you'd ever reach the 100 mil mark just purely because of the homegrown factor. Um, but I don't he, he's not going to say, he, can't, he, he, can't he, he wouldn't be down as home, can he? He came at 19, didn't he? So, isn't it three yeah, complete think, seasons in 21? Yeah. yeah, maybe a year too late, but still, I think you know, yeah. he's got a lot of Premier League experience, and I think you're right, he does walk into a lot of, of teams. So, and um, if it wasn't. Sorry, Dave, if it wasn't Mendes money, like you say, all fake and probably predetermined for 70 mil now. You could have an all-time bidding war on your hands there, couldn't you? Because we were literally saying there's so many teams that would need oh, yeah. a, a right winger. Yeah. That, oh, what a shame. Probably, the thing is, he could play all, all across the three. Really, you probably wouldn't have yeah. his loan number nine. But I think only on more pay have... just scored against Man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who scored? Oh, he has. Yeah, more pay one nil. <laughs> <laughs> He's <ass>. informed. <laughs> <laughs> Um, next question anyway this is from Ronan uh, this is a great question I saw a lot of discussion about this earlier today 2019 2020 Wolves versus current Wolves who wins and what's the score <sighs> so that is what's that Europa League Wolves is it yeah. um, mm. I think they just nick it you know just we up against himself at the moment. on the left yeah. he was on the right for one <laughs> team left for the other yeah um, <laughs> I've, I think it'll be a close game, but I think 2019 Wolves just win it. Just because of Jimenez, I think, with the with the front. Jota Jimenez. Oh. Do you think Adama, that, right. That's an inform, that's peak prime Adama as well, that is. So he'd be on it. Mm. Yeah, Totti would have him, mate. No, and oh. Patrick Atrono coming off the bench. <laughs> <laughs> do you think oh, Do you think Lamina and Jao Gomez would have... I was going to say like, this. Yeah. Go on, we would battle that. Because ne mm. Nevers and Martini always used to struggle against midfield pairing. Yeah, that, didn't uh, I was thinking. I'm, th I'm thinking of Capoue and yeah, uh, it was it that day. <laughs> Capoue, it was midfield right. at home when the when the battered us at Molyneux. It was it Decore and Capoue. Yeah, and Huddersfield. Who was it? Aaron Moy and uh, Philip Aaron. Billing. And Philip Billing. Yeah, yeah like technically, yeah, technically, you'd think. I, I don't want to sit on the fence, but I think if this current team went one 0 up against that team, this current team would beat them. I know it's very cliche. I think it'd be cool. I think it'd be a great ball. I wish I was some way out of respect for both teams. Yeah, they're, they're... Nah, <laughs> Gary O'Neill doesn't draw blanks, mate. But then I also <laughs> then again that, that, the other thing saying that as well, you've got Prime Bolly and Johnny versus Neto 
and people, I know Johnny, I know we know what Johnny's been recently, but prime Johnny was right. extra safe, ribbed the lot. He kept getting <laughs> anything through. You know, he was <laughs> fucking good. Um, you know, it's an interesting question, isn't it? Would, it, would couldn't you, you put run Fraser on Cody? Would you drop one <laughs> I was of them? Say, Mateus, couldn't you run in at Connor Cody? Um, that'd be a mm. great battle, that would. That do would it be... on Football Manager, Dave. Could you? Would you be able to do that as a video? You would be able to, but I think the... It'd be a current stats, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, this t- I don't think Wolves' attributes are, at the moment are as good as they should be, so... If only someone could change them. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe it's, maybe it's time for a poll. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll have to do a poll, like we did last week. And stuff like, uh, we'll maybe put a poll out on our though. socials, because that, that is a great question as great well. Great question. Um, we'll move on. Richard, he says, and, and George, you like this one as well. I'll start with Finch. If all, all of the, app, the players in the Wall Squad are English, which <laughs> ones would make the play, playing for Germany in, in the summer for Euros? So basically, Finn, out of our full players, who do you think would be going to the Euros? Are we going like deep on this? That like, oh, well, where do England need players? Do we? Go yeah, I think you've got to. I think you. I, I've thought about this since saw the question. I think you've got to do it as where do England lack centre half? But I, I mean, if you do position by I mean, position, 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 yeah, position, 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 eight Nori Sa- goes. Eight Nori goes. But Sa- Sa- he wouldn't start. Might get in. I think no. he might get in as like the second or third choice. Third, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's back three basically are English. Eight Nori. Oh, Who's the left back for England? Chilwell. And sure. They're normally injured anyway, aren't they? By the time it comes to Chilwell. Eight Nori probably gets in. I think you take. I think you take Eight Nori over Chilwell, don't you? Especially after yesterday as well. Hmm. Uh, oh, that's a great Ross. question. Though. I don't think I, I don't think I said I was doing it. Unfortunately. Oh, Zhao and Lamina both start over Calvin Phillips, but there's so many players that should be <laughs> in over Calvin Phillips. But if you play in that same system yeah. that they want to play, I think I think if you're going across, oh, yeah, I think Aitner E goes. I don't think we get any centre halves going. I think Samedo doesn't go just because of how many quality right backs yeah. we've got, and that's that's a shame because he's very good yeah. in his own right. I feel like this is where it's tough, isn't it? Because you go. Yeah. Rice Bell, you know, it's maybe Gomez or Lam- one of those two might get in the squad, but then and again, I would take them over someone like Calvin Phillips, of course, would, but Safegate, why not? Even Jordan Henderson as well. You'd probably say you'd place both of those with them too. However, then you think about it, there's other people like Ward, there's a lot of other people that could be in there, like Ross Barker, who's playing exceptionally well at the minute, isn't he? There's, there's a whole host of talent we've got there. Main who's another one that could go. Yeah. Curtis Jones, and, yeah, there's loads, and then you've got Neto's in the worst position, and <laughs> to be like <laughs> with competition, it's tough, isn't it? I think, I think Neto, Neto does go. Be, yeah, look, Neto goes for sure. Yeah, Neto, I think. But then I don't know who I don't know who for though. You know what I mean? When you think about like of all those wide players, it's so tough because we have got so much talent out there. Who who do you take Neto over? You got Saka, Saka yeah. Grealish. Great, all of them. Uh, Foden. Foden stays. Rashford. It's mm. tough, isn't it? God, yeah. if we lose, if we're gonna, we can tell we've scored a few goals recently, can't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll I mean, it's good to yeah. <laughs> um, And Cunha, again, like for me, you know, Kane starts, and then it's like mm. you've got Tony Wilson. I'm trying to think who else has been in the squads recently. I think if Wang on current form before the Asia Cup would have got in as well. You can't if yeah. you had an English striker scoring over ten goals that quickly. You don't ignore that, do you? Mm. So, I'm not sure. We did interesting question. That very interesting question. Um, That's because again, if we lose like three in a row, it'll be very yeah, different. yeah, but none yeah. of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wolves of Prem. He says a uh, question about Chiquinho. I think he w- w- would work great under Gary O'Neill. I love watching him play. Do you lads see him getting into the squad next season or being loaned again? So I think the main the main reason for him going out on loan this year was to obviously get his match sharpness of fitness up um, after a year out. Finn, I think if he's still the player that we think he is, I think he work mm. he would work brilliantly in this setup, wouldn't he? Yeah, I even like those few cameos at um right wing back. Do you remember? Even yeah, though, yeah. It, they gave City. me against City, didn't they? That yeah, was a bit yeah. of a shift. But Chelsea, um, Chelsea, the one week when we came back and drew two two. That was the one, yeah. And then crossing, and then City, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, versatile. I think whatever happened at Stoke, I'd, I'm not fully sure what went on there, but I thought that'd be a brilliant loan for him. As we said, but he just needed to get minutes, didn't he? Because he had so long without them. 
Um, and it looks like he's he's progressing. I mean, we've all seen the bicycle kick and then haven't haven't really seen much else of how he's been getting on. But um, I think when you see what Gary O'Neill's done, like you said before, was it Neto played 18 games last season, zero goals, zero assists. I think mm. even though I bang on about, oh, I'd have played this five at the back system, I don't think Neto, based on that, would have been in my starting eleven at the start of the season. Like it, There were so many players competing for those positions. So you see what he's done with Neto, how he's turned him around and how we're all thinking about him then to now we've all got quite a positive opinion of Chikini on this potential there I think it's definitely definitely worth um chucking him in the squad and seeing what happens next season um but as I say I've, I've hardly watched him just on I've come up with my own question quickly does Gary O'Neill end up in the England setup before any Wolves <laughs> players because I, I think I heard it was on the ramble they mentioned um not necessarily after Southgate but eventually as an England manager I'd yeah, hate to see yeah. it but I'd, also I think for England's chances yeah, no, I I agree. I think um, we we had this discussion a few weeks ago, I think, as well. Mm. But it'd, it'd be interesting. He's getting a lot of media attention. And I think Southgate, if this is his last international tournament, depends on the way the FA want to go. Because if they want to go and get, you know, an all-singing, all-dancing manager, you know, you got mm. not. I, I don't know if they'd take the England job. You'd have Klopp, you'd have Mourinho there. Mm. Uh, not that, I'm not sure, obviously, if a German would join the English setup for argument's sake. Mm. But if they do want to stick with English, Gary O'Neill's a good shout. Eddie Howe maybe is the other, other option. Mm. Graham Potter possibly still. But yeah. it'd be, um, you know, it would, it would be interesting. interesting. So, George, what are your thoughts on that? Gary O'Neill being potentially the England manager? I think we've asked this before, haven't we? I think we or might have come back about and potentially about him being an England manager. I feel like his stock at the moment is high for probably what you would expect Gary O'Neill's stock to be. And I'm trying to... This is me being as par, um, diplomatic as possible. <laughs> like I feel like he's obviously got a very... He's got a ceiling. Um, who knows what that ceiling is? We're quite fortunate that we're the we're the, the club we've got him at the moment. He could go on to be a world-class manager. There's no stopping him. You know, you've seen it happen to, to people in the past who have been decent footballers and then go on and have amazing managerial careers. And so far, what we've seen, you couldn't say you've seen something that says he couldn't do that. Um, I feel like he possibly could be an England manager in the future. I don't I don't think it'll happen for Not a while. Yet, and yeah. I don't want it to happen either. Like, yes, I feel so. like the next... I feel like the next England manager will be... Because I think Southgate probably will go after this Euros, I think. Mm. Way, yeah. I think if we win, it, I think if we win it, as Neil already said, he's leaving. Actually, um, didn't that come out that he's going? I'm not sure regardless. it's confirmed, but I think it's so. the rumors. Yeah. yeah, I mean, for me, I, I always feel like you need. I always feel like you need an English manager managing the national team. However, I reckon it will end up with someone like I feel like Mourinho could come in. Mm. Yeah, so, I feel Tournament that as football. well. Hmm. Mourinho and then but then your English manager at the moment I think you got Potter Howe O'Neill you know so it's I mean as I, obviously I love Gary O'Neill but if as a neutral and you mentioned those three names they just all sound a little bit underwhelming don't they so yeah I've got a high play to, uh, you know it's not the right but it's not talking England but would would you take <laughs> would you would and again it wouldn't do it I don't think anyway but would you take Jurgen Klopp and I don't think it happened just purely because of a mm. German manager managing England and as such but um, but Liverpool would be fuming wouldn't they oh, oh yeah they'd hate it <laughs> yeah I think I'd take him of it of course I think I'd take him I think he'll go he'll end up in the Germany job anyway so mm. Mm. We'll, we'll see um final question this is off Lewis um where this is a big big talking point again I've seen this Finn where do you think we would be if we still had Lopetegui? I think this most weeks, especially like when George did that tweet of the um, tweenies video. So far. <laughs> very good. I think th there's lots of things to analyse there. Um, I think <laughs> it was tweenies. Was it tweenies? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was the tweenies, it, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. What a show. Um, but <laughs> I think for starters, you've got big, big sliding doors moments. Aiden or he could be out on loan and, and not on the plane if he was English. Um, so there's there's big things there. I think I've always rated eight Nori, and I'm glad for for him that that's turned around there. I think we still had an incredible. We're talking about the, the however long undefeated at home until United. We still had an incredible home record, but I think 
it was one nil, one nil, nil nil, one nil, wasn't it? So I'd still have faith in it in being a great manager and probably eking out results like that. I think would be a completely different team. Um, like you say, what was that stat? Six six over two goals in a hundred and something, and then recently we've been firing goals in. I think the big things are obvious, aren't they? The goal record, um, maybe conceded um fewer, but I think it was just a negative, completely negative vibe, wasn't it, at the time? It was we were going into a season on the players being told they're not good enough. So I don't think we'd be in the top half. And and I mean, he's won European trophies and he's very well decorated, but I think somehow we'd be worse off. And I didn't think mm. I'd say this at the start of the season, but we'd be worse off with Julian Lafatagi than Gary O'Neill with two days pre-season. It, it's crazy. I don't mean, it, obviously, Jordan, we've never, you know, it was his, Lafatagi's first full pre-season up until he walked out. So I don't know. And I don't think we would have seen, you know, we haven't seen what he was working on or what we were capable mm. of. What was he cooking? Yeah, um, but it'd be interesting, George, because I think things are. I don't think we'd be bottom three. I think we'd be far, far away from it. I think with the quality that we've got, but I think you are right, Finn. In the fact that I don't think we would have scored as, as many goals, but I think defensively, you know, we probably would have been a little bit better. But it would have been. I think it wouldn't have been as entertaining to watch. I think that's the big thing with Wolves at the moment. You know, the United game for argument. So yes, we lost. But there was a lot of drama. It was entertaining to watch, especially in the second half. And we have played much, much better football with this back five. Um, would Lopetegui have gone with that? I don't know. Because every time he tried to use a back five, it was awful. You know, he tried it a couple of times in the second half of last season. So what do you what do you think, George, position-wise, whereabouts would we be? So I was a fan of Lopetegui. Um, I still think he's a good manager. Um, I, th- I think he did a great job with us. I think, I know we went out... In there was a lot of uh, a lot of ill feeling, probably how he left in the mm. summer. But he still saved us from the abyss, really, didn't he? We were, we were rock bottom. People mm. forget that, and I think he did a good job. And I feel like you can't take that away from him. We might have been in and around where we are now, but in a completely different way, like you've sort of yeah. said. Um, I don't. Yeah, we would have been more pragmatic. Would have probably been less easy on the eye. And I feel like at the moment. We're we're slowly becoming people's second team again, and I mean that from a point of there's a lot of intent. When we first come under Nuno, people quite liked the like us. coming to Molyneux, the liked mm. us. I feel like we have been pretty boring for the neutral. We've been boring for fucking Wolves fans, to be honest with you, as well at times <laughs> um, before this season. Um, it sort of just got a bit stale, I thought, really. Mm. Um, and we're a lot different now. Like I say, it's good to see us scoring goals and putting the ball in the back of the net. And yeah, we definitely won't be scoring threes and fours under Lopetegui. I'll be, mm. I'm, I'm conf- that's the one thing I'm confident of. It wouldn't have happened. We'd have gone one, two nil up and we would have batten down the hatches. But the one thing was with Lopetegui, I always felt when we went ahead as well, our record when we went ahead under Lopetegui must have yeah. been one of the best ever. Because I yeah. don't felt like we won so many games one nil. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the one thing, I, I don't know, I was disappointed with how he, he walked away, but Wolves are still, well, Lopetegui is still very fond of Wolves. Uh, I don't know if I told you guys this, but he got in contact with people at the club at, after the Black Country derby to congratulate the club on the victory and stuff like that. So, um, you know, he's still local. I think he's got his, his heart set on staying in the Premier League. So, it be very interesting to see what happens there. I think maybe if Hodgson... He's, he's, he's sacked sooner rather than later at Palace. He could go to Palace. The, although that's the like, one thing I think about the Palace move is like I know it's sort of been touted a little bit. Like they've got less money than us. Mm. Like yeah. and the in terms of ambitions of the owner, that they're far less ambitious than what we are. I really so I think if he goes see there. Where, I can't see where he fits in in this in this league. To be honest, I think he'd have to be like, very. So lucky. Chelsea would be because I, I, although I saw today they can't afford to sack. Potch, can they because of FFP sure. or something? But is what it... <laughs> you would need to hope is, yeah, if something like that happens where a big club loses their manager and he says, Look, I'll yeah. be your interim for six months, give me a chance. No, I like, think he could you know... I have faith in him doing more than Potch, probably at Chelsea. Like, I still think he's a, a very good I would manager. as well. Yeah, I, so I, I think, I, I I think the I'm... dream for him, I was gonna say, I think the dream move for him is Emery goes in the summer somewhere and he goes into Villa. And if oh, he goes to Villa. I mean, that'll be... Uh, yeah, take that bit out, Dave. Hey, in case tasty, baby! <laughs> no, but I, that that's the team. only... That's, I could see him going to Villa. I think um, West Ham as well was the one. 
uh, that he mm. would have liked. Yeah, I mean, look, West Ham yeah. are, I mean, they've got a big stadium. They've they've got, well, they've won the European trophy recently. They're a good team, aren't they, West Ham? I always feel like that they should do better. But then at the flip of that, I always feel like David Moyes gets a real bad rap because I feel like... Mm. He gets the results, man. He's a good manager. Like I, 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 I would die on the sword that if Man United would have stuck with him, they would not be in this situation now. He'd have won, try, he'd have won a Premier League with Man United if they just give him the time. No doubt about it. Especially at that time when he took over that Man United side. They were, mm. they were, they were still the team, weren't they? They're not yeah. now, but they were then. Be, be interesting. I think Gary, well, both managers, Lopetegui would be interested to see, but Gary O'Neill going into the summer as well would be very intriguing to see his situation as well. But, I mean, lads, we've got loads um, spoken about on on the pod, so enjoyed it as always. We will be back next week for the reaction to the Brentford game. Um, Obviously, loads of content on the socials, at Talking Walls Everywhere, uh, on at Dave as a Party on Twitter and Instagram. Jordan, where can people find you if they wish? At Jordan7 on Twitter and Instagram. And Finn, good to have you back, obviously. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, Finn is F-I-N-E-R-R-Z um, on everything. That was a bit of a, I think we've done a good neutral podcast there for the last 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. A bit of England, a bit of, bit of an overall Premier League. Premier League. Yeah. Talking <laughs> neutral. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, if you have enjoyed the podcast, if you're watching or listening on YouTube, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, be sure to leave us a five-star review. We're here on Talking Walls everywhere. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week, guys, and fingers crossed we get three points against Brentford. We'll catch you next time.